Hello folks and welcome back to another edition of BC Renovation Magazine. I've just completed installation of this brand new sink in our uh, kitchen renovation here. If you'd like to see how I did that, stick around. Yeah, so if you've been uh, following along with us folks, uh, you know that we've been working on this uh, renovation of this home and uh, we've redone a complete kitchen here as well so um, yeah the, the next step in our project here is to uh, install our kitchen sink which is going to go right here um, we've uh, if you've been following along you know that we've installed our cabinets and we've installed new uh, counters here and so uh, if you've missed those we have a couple of videos that show you know the process of getting the, the cabinets and the counters installed to get to this point all right, so uh, here are here's the uh, the new sink. It's in the box here. I'll get it unpacked for you. But we've got a, a stainless steel sink and we've got a uh, a faucet for it. And uh, like I say, it's going to be going in this space right here. So we we'll, uh, we have to cut a counter hole in the counter for the sink to drop in. Um, underneath, um, we are uh, we're ready to uh, install the sink. We've done you know, our roughing work, so we have. All of our plumbing installed here for the uh, supply and uh, I'll just sort of briefly go over this with you so this is the uh, the hot coming in uh, and this is the uh, cold side and so on the hot side we have uh, we'll be attaching our faucet to to it right here to this valve we have a shut off valve and then this will be the cold here this other stuff here is we have a rough in here for the dishwasher and uh, we also have a rough in here for the uh, water to the fridge and then this is for a outside faucet. Uh, eventually we will be plumbing when we install the dishwasher. Uh, we will be uh, taking everything through that hole there into the dishwasher space over here. So as far as the drain goes, you can see we have nothing in there for the drain. Um, so all of our pipes are in this uh, next cabinet over here to the left. And the reason that the, uh, that the, the, the plumbing for the drain is over here is because we have a window here. And this particular home has two by four walls, and so uh, they, uh, when you have that situation where the sink is here, you can't run your pipes up the wall. So, you know, through this, through the where the window is. So, what they do is they run up beside it, and then we have to bring the uh, pipes through. That we'll have to go through the side cabinet here, into this space here where the sink is actually going to be. Okay, so. Um, there's where the, the drain drains down into the connects with the uh, sewer in the house and we got a couple parts here and then that's the vent up there which uh, vents the whole system all right so uh, I'll unpack the, uh, the sink and the faucet and then I'll show you show you where we're at with that okay so we've got our uh, sink unpacked and this is what it looks like so we're going with what's called a drop-in sink here which means we're going to cut our hole and drop the sink in uh, there's different kinds of sinks. There's under mounts and, and uh, whatnot. But uh, in this one, we're just going with a plain old stainless steel sink. And it's going to sit on top of the counter uh, with this edge here. So you can see this part will all drop down in. Once they get the hole cut, it will be, you know, down inside the cabinet. And so uh, this sink comes, uh, you know, it's a kit. It comes with, uh, you know, the strainers uh, and the drains. Uh, we get two of those. So we'll be installing those into the, the hole there. And then to hold the sink in, to, in place, we have these clamps, uh, which uh, attach from underneath, and I'll show you how that works, uh, you know, to hold the sink in. Um, and over here we have the, the faucet. So this is going to be the faucet, and here we have our supply lines, and this is what's going to connect to the, uh, you know, the shutoff valve down there. Um, this, uh, so this, this uh, tap, it's a gooseneck tap. You can see it looks like this, and we've got uh, you know a single uh, single lever, and so we have one, we have one hole here. So if you want to make your sink, uh, you know, your installation look a little bit more upscale, um, we we use a sink with one hole in it, and and we have you know just this sort of this one hole thing here like this. Now if we were uh, using a sink that has three holes in it okay so if you're doing a retrofit you might have a, a sink that's got you know three holes where you've got like two taps or whatever um, then you they send they have they uh, uh, also included this uh, 
this trim piece here, I'll just take it out for you, which would basically cover the the other holes, okay? Uh, but you can see this kind of a big clunky thing here and we don't really need that. Uh, so we're going to eliminate that plate and we'll just have the, the top going down into here. So you'll see how that will look. It gives it a much cleaner look. It's a, it's a more high-end look and uh, you know, just, just a little tip for you there if you want to make your installation look a little bit nicer, a little bit more upscale, um, you know, that that's a little, little thing that you can do. You know, try to eliminate that plate, just go over one whole sink. And so they've, uh, they've uh, sent us in the box, they sent us a template. And so what we're going to do now is uh, figure out where the sink's going to go. We'll use that template to... Uh, you know, scribe a line on the counter where we cut and uh, we'll go ahead and get that hole cut and then we'll be able to start the the uh, sink installation. Okay, so on the, I also want to mention, you can see I've, re I've removed the doors here. So you just do that as a uh, sort of a safety precaution to, you know, so you don't damage your doors. So I've laid out where the sink's going to go here now and basically what I've done is I've, I've centered the sink, you know, between the, the front of the counter and the back of the counter here. And so this is gonna be centered. Now, uh, this template uses a little bit undersized from the sink, so the sink actually goes past here. So uh, that's why we're a little bit forward here with it. Um, and so right here, I don't know if you can see it, uh, kind of faint, but there's a pencil line there, which is the front of my sink, the actual sink. And so three quarters back is where uh, I'm going to make my cut. So. Um, I've also centered the sink this way, so it's centered with my cabinet. So that will, you know, everything will end up centered here, which also has me centered with the uh, the window there. So we have nice symmetry there. You know, when I put the doors back on, where the two doors meet, will be in the center, and we'll have you know a nice center line here to keep things straight. Um, so I've uh, positioned this in here, and you can see I've just you know drawn a. Uh, a line on there with the felt marker. I will take the template away now and I will follow that line with my saw. Um, the, this uh, is a really nice template that they sent here. It's very, very solid. Um, something I want to mention here now, you'll notice these radius edges on the cutout. Um, again, you know, going back to a discussion we had when we did the counters about, you know, not going in square with these, we always want a radius. You know to prevent the laminate from cracking it's the same thing here we don't want to cut square holes here square corners in the holes with our saw because that can create a stress point which you know can cause the, a crack here in the laminate and, you know and you may have seen that where uh you know around a sink there'll be a crack coming out from underneath the sink and that's because they went square they didn't do this radius so you know these radiuses here release this relieve the stress so that you know you don't get these cracks from the corners so get very important that you follow the radius. Never cut a square, never cut a square corner in the laminate. All right, so I'm going to take this off now, and I'm going to get ready to saw it. And I'll show you what I'm going to use to saw it. All right, folks. So I'll show you where I'm at here now. So I've there. You can see the uh, the line that I'm going to follow. And because I'm by myself here, it, this big piece of, of cutout here is kind of hard to handle. By myself you know you kind of have to catch it underneath so that it you know it doesn't fall through and it uh, yeah it's hard to do when you're on, on your own you got a big piece so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out in two pieces so I will be taking out one half and then I'll take out the other half um, and so you know you just have to drill yourself a couple holes to get started so you can stick your your you know the bit of your uh, jigsaw in I'm gonna be using a jigsaw to, to make my cut and I'm, I'm using what's called a scroll, a scroll blade. It's a very fine blade, so it, uh, you know, we don't get any chipping. And uh, yeah, so I just drill these holes, just you know, with one of these spade bits. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead now and get that hole cut out. Um, I've also put a pad underneath so that you know, in case something drops through there, it's not going to uh, do any damage in the cabinet. And another thing here, just before I start, you can see on the base of my jigsaw, I've just put some uh, masking tape, uh, and that's just to prevent, you know, the metal edge of the uh, jigsaw, the you know, the base, uh, you know, from 
possibly scratching the laminate. So, you know, what the sink's gonna overhang here about three quarters of an inch. So, you know, we have a little bit of fudge space, but, you know, I mean, you can see that the base is, is more than three quarter inch from the center of the blade. So, yeah, just a little uh, precaution thing there to make sure we don't scratch our surface with the base of the saw. And so there you can see I'm halfway there. So that's half of my cutout. And there it is down there. And so like I said, folks, the, you know, kind of the scariest part of this is cutting, uh, you know, is cutting the, uh, the hole out. You know, you don't want to get a big chip out of here that would kind of ruin things for you. Um, so I use that scroll uh, blade and you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a nice, it's a really nice edge there. Uh, but my, my blade is dull, so you know when I make the second cut here now, I'm going to change my blade. So this is the blade here that I was using, and so it's called a scroll because it's a very thin, narrow blade. Um, you know, I have enough room here on these radiuses that I can go to a little bit wider blade. So I'm going to change from this, this is the one that I had in there, and I'm going to change it from that one to this one. So on this one here, the teeth are facing up. They're facing up like this, so that when you're cutting, uh, your 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 material is coming up through the top of the cut, and uh, that also you know when you're cutting up, it also there's a chance you know that that could grab and tear. But that being a scroll blade and uh, you know so fine, it's uh, you know I mean you can see that it wasn't a problem. But I'm going to change now, and so this blade is a blade that it's called a reverse cut. All right, so I'm not sure if you got picking that up but it's a reverse cut blade and uh, the teeth on this one face down so when this one is cutting it's it's cutting on the down stroke so and, and it comes back up it's not cutting so uh, that minimizes the chance of you know grabbing something on the up cut uh, and tearing it causing a chip because you're actually cutting on the down cut where you know underneath we don't care what happens down there but uh, so I'm gonna change the blade now and I'm gonna go with this one just because I don't have another one of these. And yeah, there we go, we've got a hole in our counter now that our sink is going to drop into. Yeah, there's both my pieces over there, right there. So uh, in that clip where uh, you saw me sawing, you may have seen the, uh, the, the, saw, the, the saw jumping a little bit. Um, that's because I had a pretty aggressive uh, blade in there. Um, that blade was a 10 tooth per inch, uh, which is a little, bit, a little bit heavy for what I'm doing, a little bit coarse for what I'm doing here. The scroll blade has a 14 teeth per inch, and so the uh, 14 teeth per inch uh, blade is a finer cut, and it it does a nicer job so uh, I would recommend you know something at, at, the, at least 14 teeth per inch for your uh, your pitch on your blade and uh, so yeah that's just for your you more technical types that were probably wondering what uh, what kind of blade I was using there all right so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean this up now and uh, we'll get ready to start setting the sink in there all right so I've just uh, placed the sink in the in the uh, cutout there and uh, next thing we have to do is uh, drill a hole in the counter here for the tap. So the counter goes underneath uh, the back part of the sink here. And, you know, our cutout is kind of in here somewhere. And so what that does is it gives us, you know, a nice firm place to put our, uh, attach our tap to. Uh, we don't want to attach it just to the metal of the sink because, you know, it's quite, it's quite thin. And, you know, we get a wibble wobble thing going on there. So uh, what I have to do now is I have to uh, mark this hole, and then I'll pull the sink out, and then I'll and then and then I'll drill that hole there for the uh, the tap um, to go through. So all of this stuff here then will go through that through that hole in the back and the hole in the counter that I'm going to make. Okay, so I've got my hole marked there. I've got the center uh, marked, and uh, that's a pretty good size hole, uh, inch and a half basically. So I'm going to be uh, using a hole saw in my drill here to cut that uh, to cut that hole and I'm going just a little bit bigger this is an inch and three quarter just to give me a little bit of uh, you know wiggle room there to you know, make some adjustments um, if you build, drill it exactly the same size well then you're stuck you can't make any adjustments you know to get your sink lined up 
So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go a quarter inch over it, which gives me uh, you know a little bit of room that I can slide things around there once I get the sink in, and the tap installed to you know get my sink lined up perfectly. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill that hole now. So this would go better with a corded drill, folks. So that's one of the things with cordless tools. Um, I mean, you could, if you if you have really high-end cordless tools, you know, you can get the torque. But uh, um, I mean, these aren't cheap tools. But uh, you know, they're also with the batteries. You know, you uh, you run out of power quickly. Um, I'm old school. I kind of still provide the cordless, uh, the corded ones. Uh, I don't have one with me today here. So I'm just gonna sort of grind through this. Okay, and there you see, we've, uh, we've made the cut, all right. All right, so there's our hole, and uh, again, I'm gonna clean up again here, and now we're ready to set the sink on. The sink's gonna go over here, and uh, our tap will go through there, and then we'll clamp it to the, to the counter here. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and install the sink. And uh, so, so the way this sink is held in is with, with these clamps. And the way this works is uh, the sink has got these little tabs all around it. And uh, what we do is we put these clamps on. So we, so we uh, just insert, insert them there. And, and you know, they give us a few options of where we can put them, you know, in case you have to go around something. But you can see on the top of the clamps got these little teeth on there. And so what happens is our counter uh, we'll go in there like where my fingers are and then we screw this up Okay, and what that does it draws that clamp up uh, To where the counter is and then it sandwiches the counter in between the the clamp and the underside of the sink So I'm gonna go ahead and position these and uh, you know, then I'll drop my sink in so you, you want to get these all installed because uh, like hanging here uh, because the way these work is is they go they go in like this so you can see, you know, along the side here, it's, it's pretty tight. So, you know, we have to get this in and kind of hanging there like that. And then we, then we will drop the sink in and then rotate these and, uh, and, and then tighten it up. So uh, that's what I'm going to do next here. Okay, so I've got my clamps all in place, just hanging there. And um, I'll give you a, a look at the underside. So this is where the, uh, the uh, tap's going to come through. And, you know, our counter comes up around here somewhere. Uh, this particular sink has a uh, gasket on the bottom here, a foam gasket, rubber gasket. So uh, when that goes in onto the counter, that's what's going to seal this sink. So if you're doing like a, uh, a porcelain sink or something like that uh, that doesn't have a gasket, what you would have to do is, uh, you know, put some kind of a, a sealer on there. So either a gasket of some kind or what I usually do is just draw a bead of silicone on the counter and then set the sink into that. But this one, you know, with the uh, that rubber gasket there, I don't have to do that. That's going to seal it. So I think you can see it there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this in now. Okay, folks, I'm going to try and give you a, a shot from underneath the sink here. So I'm inside the sink cabinet now looking up at the bottom of the sink. And I just want to show you these clamps, kind of how this work. Uh, so I've just got them sort of in place. I've got it positioned loosely here. Um, you know, you've got to make sure you get uh, everything sort of lined up here. And I just go around, you know, and do, and do all of them like that. Okay, all the way around. It's kind of tight on the sides here. Here's, this is across the front. Okay, so you can see, uh, hopefully you can see that. I've sort of got everything lined up. And so now I will start to torque these down, okay? And uh, you don't want to, you don't want to get too crazy with these because you can mend the sink if you, uh, you know, if you pull too much. So uh, if you have someone helping you, it's good to have somebody watch on the top for you and see, you know, kind of watch as the sink gets pulled down to the counter and sort of, you know, tell you when you're there. But uh, I don't take it all at once on one, one bolt, one clamp. So, you know, I'll do this one and then I kind of go across and, you know, back and forth and sort of do it that way. So I pull so I pull the sink down evenly to the counter and not, you know, not trying to do one corner at a time like they, or go around. Again, you know, sort of do a crisscross and, uh, you know, just take your time at it and just go easy at it and, uh, um, you know, you'll get it. 
Uh, there you can see the that that's the hole there for where the sink, the uh, tap the tap's going to come through, and so that 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 will stick through there. And uh, you know, I'll show you that when I get to that. But there's going to be a clamp that will clamp to the counter to make that uh, nice and steady. And while you're doing all that, you want to make sure that you keep your sink lined up, that it doesn't shift on you while you're working underneath there. So um, I'm just, it, it's, it's getting, starting to get pretty solid in there already, just with those clamps sort of finger tight. But um, you know, I've, well, I, the way I laid it out was I've got the same distance here as here. So uh, you want to keep checking that, you know, that your, uh, your space from the, from the front of the sink to the counter is the same. You don't want to have your sink in there crooked. So you just want to make sure. And again, you know, you've got leeway in your cutout to make those adjustments on the sink. And then to make sure that we're keeping center, I still have my uh, little reference mark here for center. And so, you know, I just put my uh, square on there and I go in and you can see that the edge of the square is on the center of the sink. You know, we don't want the sink, uh, you know, off to one side or the other. So just little things that you have to keep checking until you get it completely in there. Um, the the uh, tap, once the tap goes on there, it's gonna also help to clamp the sink together as well because the, it clamps, it'll clamp the sink and the counter, everything uh, clamps together. So that will help to hold the back of the sink down. You can see on the, uh, on the front here, we had four clamps, okay? There was four clamps. In the back, we only had one and one. There's nothing in here for clamps, and that's because they're counting on the uh, tap to clamp the back there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these clamped down, and then the next thing up will be the, uh, will be the uh, tap. All right, folks, so I have the sink set now, and I've installed the faucet. And so this is the faucet that we've, uh, we're using here. So it's a single lever control. Uh, you turn it on back and forth for hot and cold. Um, it has a built-in uh, Whatever you call this thing sprayer, I guess it is and so this has a couple settings you push this button to get a spray um, Yeah, so that's that so that's installed there now um, I'll show you the connection in the bottom here. So This is what this bottom of the tap looks like. So there's the bottom of the tap just clamps up to the underside of the counter you can see it there okay and then we have all the various hoses that come down and so you know this is very simple it just screws on to this valve here nothing to it that's the hot side now uh, I've put a filter in here so this is something that uh, uh, you might not do in your home but uh, this is the cold side for the, the tap itself and so it's so the cold side here is going through this filter and so we have the line coming from the the cold into the filter all right back there so the water goes through the filter and it comes back out here so we've made our connection to our cold tap over here okay so that's giving us uh cold that's giving us filtered water on the cold side so i'll just explain to you sort of how the uh, filtering how we're handling the water filter in filtering in this home so back here by the hot water tank Turn the light on here. Okay, so we have uh, this is the main, the main uh, uh, comes into the main the main house main line into the house. So that's the main shut off of the house. And so back in here we have a whole house filter that I installed way back when, when I was doing the rough in. So this filters the water as it's coming into the house. So all of the water water that comes to wherever it goes in the house goes through this filter. And so. This filter is designed to help stop the, uh, you know, getting sediment in your hot water tank. Um, it keeps the sand and grit and stuff out. We're in a well system here, so the, the water here does tend to have a bit of uh, stuff in it. Um, you know, it keeps it out of all your solenoid valves and all that kind of stuff, like in your washer, you know, your dishwasher, clothes washer, out of your shower valves and all of that. And so from there, you know, it just distributes throughout the house. So that's our first our first filter, which is more of like a uh, sort of a particulate filter, just gets the crap out and uh, keeps those uh, that sediment from going through. And then, uh, so so secondarily on the uh, on here we have so this is a different kind of a filter now, uh, which you know starts to take out more microns of stuff. It's not a reverse osmosis, but it's uh, you know it takes out a lot of the fine stuff 
um, that you would find, you know, in, in water. And we put it on the coal tap here. And so, you know, if you're going to cook, you're going to cook with filtered water. You'll take your cold water out of there. If you're washing dishes and stuff, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about the filtered water. And then in our fridge, right now I've got the uh, washing machine sitting here temporarily, but the fridge is going to go in this area here. And so we have a pipe down in there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a pipe down in there that's going to feed uh, water to our fridge. And in the fridge, uh, there's a filter in the fridge. And the fridge is going to have an ice maker and it's going to have, you know, chilled water in the fridge to drink uh, from in the, in the door. So uh, that water for drinking an ice will be filtered, you know, in the fridge when we get to that point. So everything is filtered here except the hot. Of course, you know, the hot, you don't need it. Uh, we're not running the, the uh, cold water that goes to the washing machine or the, you know, the toilets or the tubs or all of that. Uh, through that secondary filter it does go through that first filter which is just again more of a sediment filter or it just starts to take the other stuff out of the filter this one here out of the water with this one here so uh, we you know so we don't have to run all that water that's just gonna you know get used for washing and stuff it doesn't go through doesn't have to go through the filter and you know use up your filter so uh, this is a cartridge filter um, it's a canister and that canister on on uh, screws and there's a, a, a cartridge in there so they basically have to be replaced in the way we set this up that it'll probably have to be replaced once a year uh, so you know it's a pretty efficient uh, system uh, this is not a video about the water filter but you know it is part of the sink installation here so let's just kind of show you how this is coming together so the next thing up now is we're going to get into the uh, drains all right and so there's our there's our uh, you know these are our drains we're going to fit these in now and then this is all the plumbing fittings and stuff that I have to connect, I have to connect now the drain into this cabinet like I told you before. So, you know, I'm gonna have to start in here and there'll be some holes and stuff to drill. So, uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, keep get, getting you some shots here as I get through, go through on the drain. Now these are the sinks, these are a lot of work, these kitchen sinks, you know, there's a lot going on under a kitchen sink, especially, you know, when you add a filter and a dishwasher and all of that stuff, so, uh, yeah, we'll keep going here, folks. Okay, and for those of you who are, who are wondering, you know, about the cost of this and, and what I'm using here, um, I, I'm using a sink called uh, Onyx. And you can see it there. I got this off of Amazon, Amazon Canada, Amazon.ca. I'm sure you can get it in the States as well. Um, you know, it was like $200 Canadian for the sink, so that's a pretty reasonable price for a sink. The faucet I'm using came from uh, a store here called Rona, which in the in states you guys have uh, Lowe's. Uh, this actually I've had this in stock for a while, and this sink is uh, this, uh, this uh, thing is no longer available. Um, they've changed it and discontinued it in Canada. You may be able to get it at a Lowe's in uh, in the United States. I don't know, but uh, it is a very nice, you know, very simple, uh, simple kind of a. Uh, faucet you know a lot of them get kind of fancy and sort of got overdone but you know i like the simplicity of this one but uh like i say it's uh no longer available to us up here anymore um it was a, it was called, it was uber uber house brand which was a rona house brand so i don't know what that would equivalent uh, be equivalent to at lowe's um and it was about I can't remember around $150 for that. So, you know, both of these together, we're looking at about $350 to, uh, you know, for the sink and the faucet. And it was probably another $50 in drain parts here. Um, the uh, filter, uh, we're not going to worry about that. I didn't buy that. That was actually a, a gift to me from uh, from a vendor. But uh, yeah, so the cost, you know, I'm doing my own labor. If you were to hire a uh, plumber to come in and do this for you, you know, you'd probably be looking at, uh, I don't know, probably, I would, I would think you'd probably be looking around three to $400 for labor uh, to have a plumber come in and do this. So, you know, if you could do it yourself, it's a little bit technical, but it's not bad. It's just, again, it's another one of those big puzzles and you just have to put stuff together. And as long as you put it together correctly, I mean, it's really, it's not that, not, I mean, it's not rocket science here, but, uh, um, yeah, anyways, I'm going to carry on here. Just wanted to give you sort of an idea of the costs and what I was using. I don't know, people are always interested in that. Okay, so I've got my drains in. Um, 
and uh, so we have these strainers that go in there the stopper and the strainer and so uh, something I'm just going to mention something to you here when you do this stuff here do it yourself for uh, things that help uh, you make look more like a professional is uh, little details so things that we call clocking so for example here we uh, you can see hopefully you can see we have a label here and we also have one here which is our it's a CSA label and so I positioned the, the cup you know so that that's facing up uh, up same there instead of having you know one here and one here just keep things lined up it also you know the, uh, the in the drain you know our uh, thing here is the same as there okay in the bottom of the drain and so that is called clocking uh, the little screw in there that's um, holding it all together you can see how I have the slot going up okay slot going up does that really matter no but it is something that's called an attention to detail that you know helps you look professional and uh, you know if you have a professional that's doing those kinds of things you know that's a professional that takes pride in their work a lot of a lot of trades guys don't don't worry about stuff like that they don't care about it but uh, you know it's something that I do uh, care about and I pay attention to all right so uh, underneath here now here I'll show you so now here you know we just have the strainer basket and stopper it just pops in there typical nothing fancy there now that you know here system may vary from this you know every sink manufacturer does things a little different but the basic principle is the same it's you know it's the same idea okay so underneath here you can see now we have the this is the bottom part of it and you know we have various gaskets and stuff in there to uh, you know seal it so it doesn't leak so you know you just have to pay attention to your you know your instructions and install it accordingly so we have here what's called the tailpiece and the tailpiece now is going to attach to uh, you know to the cup like this there is a rubber gasket in there but um, I like to put a little Teflon there as well just to make sure that you know that we're not going to get a leak uh, do you need it I don't know but uh, it's not going to hurt anything there so you know this just screws on there like that one and uh, so then we have a seal all the way down now is where we're going to get into uh, you know actually attaching this to the drain in the home and so we there's this uh, little device like this I don't know what it's called uh, but this slides on here okay and then this will clamp onto that and then this is the start of our plumbing out that will go down into the drain okay uh, where we start to glue it so now where I am all of our fittings are ABS this black pipe okay uh, you know where you are you may have the white PVC and again, you know, that's just a local thing. That's a jurisdiction thing. Uh, here we have to use this. So this is what's uh, required for our plumbing code here. And so that's what I will be using. So now I just have to go ahead and start fitting, you know, up the, uh, the ABS and, uh, you know, get it through this cabinet and attach to here. So um, that's, up, that's what's up next. And, uh, you know, speaking of attention to detail, another thing that I like to do is uh, all these labels on these fittings and stuff. Yeah, you know, I like to remove those. I buy my stuff at uh, Home Depot, which is, you know, retail. Uh, you know, if you're a plumber, you can go to a wholesale, plumbing wholesale, and you buy your stuff. And I don't think they have all these tags on here. But, uh, you know, when I open up the, the sink, you know, I don't want to see all these labels on here. So, uh, you know, all they are is just for, uh, you know, for the retail, retail sales part of it. So I remove all of those. Again, you know, it's just a funny little thing that I like to do, but uh, I think it makes a little, your job look better if you, you know, it's clean. It doesn't have all that labeling on there. All right, so I'm starting to do the mock-up on my drain. So I haven't glued anything together here yet, but uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, like I guess I'm just mocking it up. And so now I'll start to glue stuff together. Um, and basically kind of the way this goes is I, I will glue this up together and then I'll glue this piece together what I have there so far so there you can see the uh, p-trap all right and uh, we've got this thing in here for the uh, dishwasher when we get our dishwasher uh, installed then uh, we will be connecting the dishwasher drain to this and then the supply for the dishwasher comes off of that um, so yeah, basically I'll get this all together and then I'll fit this final piece in here Then I'm gonna have to make a hole in the cabinet to come through to 
this side here which I've started to mock up all right so um, I've got to connect you know my my vent up here and uh, the uh, drain pipe will come through the side of the cabinet into this somehow um, I've got a clean out here to clean out the, the uh, drain in case it gets plugged and so yeah I'm just gonna start gluing up here and the way we glue these uh, ABS pipes together is uh, we use a solvent cement and so this is what I'm using here so uh, basically we start with uh, uh, a cleaner so we want to clean the pipe first and then we once we clean it some people call it priming it um, then we will use the uh, the uh, cement to uh, glue, it, glue it together so this is an ABS cement so if you are using the white PVC pipe it's basically the same idea except you will use products for the uh, PVC and so I've taken my uh, template you know that I used to cut the sink out and I put it underneath here to uh, protect the bottom of the cabinet while while I glue and stuff so that you know if I get any drips they're gonna drip onto my paper and not onto the cabinet floor Okay, folks, so this is how this is kind of finishing up here. Um, we've got our our sink installed. We've got our uh, gooseneck here, uh, faucet. Um, here's the drains now uh, finished. And so you can see how this came together. And uh, yeah, it was a little tricky getting through into this cabinet, you know, to connect to the, to the drain and everything there. And then we have the, the vent up above there. I had to make a little notch in the shelf there to you know push it so the shelf would go in again and so we so here we have a this is a clean out for you know to clean out the drain it's important that you do that um and uh, this is our pea trap and uh it's not trapping pea it's called a pea trap because it's sh shaped like a pea and uh, you can see how this all is going to work here the dishwasher will connect into here when we're uh once we get to that point okay and uh yeah it's just when you're doing the it's just again it's just a big puzzle but when you're when you're doing your drains uh you know we're draining to this point there that's where the sewer is so you know you have to grade all of your pipes a little bit as you go along so that you know everything is running towards there you don't want to have your pipes in there this way so that you know water sits in them the only place you want water sitting is is in the trap and so, um, you know, here this dishwasher fitting, uh, will, this will be the drain. So, you know, when we hook the drain hose, we want that pointing in the direction of the, you know, of the flow of the sewage. And, you know, you wouldn't want to have this turn around the other way because then you'd be, you know, going against, against the grain, so to say, say, okay. Same thing here, when you get to these uh, T's, you can see how the T has a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a round, a bit rounded. So you want to have that, you know, pointing in the direction that your sewage is going to go. You don't want that pointing up, right? So this pipe's going to come across here and it's going to drain into that and it's going to drain this way, all right? Okay, and then the water's going to go through this down there. And same thing with this T here. You can see we've got it you know, sloped so that it's gonna, when it enters that pipe, it's already kind of heading down. Right, so that, uh, that's gonna do, uh, do it up for this one, folks. That's kind of how I install a kitchen sink. And uh, I hope you, hope, that, hope you found that helpful. If you did, uh, give me a like, share the video with, uh, with someone, and uh, that really helps out the channel. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.